Hello, friends, and welcome to our Holy Thursday uh, celebration of the Lord's Supper. Uh, today, we're going to offer our Mass for all the sick members of our, our community, especially the Iona Prep community. We've received a lot of good, uh, good news over the last couple of days of people who have been surviving the uh, coronavirus and are doing well. We've also received uh, information that one or two people have uh, passed away. Uh, Marcellus Harris's uh, dad, a uh, sophomore, uh, Mr. Harris passed away last Sunday. So we'll remember uh, Marcellus and his family in our prayers. With that, let us begin and greet our celebrant, Father Justin. We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, for whom we are saved and delivered. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar, you shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake in it. The lamb must be a one-year-old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. The same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loin skirt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you'll, you shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through your Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our, Our blessing, blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. 
Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, and you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, that not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined the table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today is Holy Thursday, the night uh, that our Lord has given us uh, these two beautiful sacraments of, of the priesthood and the Eucharist, uh, the night that he gave us his uh, body and blood, and he encourages us to do this in memory of him. This is why uh, we still have the Eucharist in the church today, every Sunday, every day, uh, the priest stands at the altar offering uh, the body and blood of Jesus uh, so that people uh, can receive him. Unfortunately, because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in, uh, we're not able uh, to receive uh, the Eucharist, but we still come together as a, as a family of prayer, uh, being grateful for the gratitude and the gift uh, that the Eucharist is in our lives. Even though we physically can't receive Jesus, the fact that Masses are being celebrated uh, throughout the world uh, by priests for you, uh, for you to experience God's love and God's presence uh, in a powerful way. Uh, also, as I think of the gospel, uh, usually we have the washing of the disciples' feet 
at the Holy Thursday liturgy, and this is what Jesus did to the apostles. Now this year, unfortunately, I'm not able uh, to do that, uh, to wash people's feet, but I was blessed uh, about a month or so ago, uh, we took a, a number of boys on a leadership uh, retreat, um, and one of the activities we did uh, was reading the gospel here and washing uh, their feet and, and as a symbol of what Jesus did as what it means to be kind of a servant leader. And this is ultimately what we're all called to do, uh, to, to lay down our lives in love. And I think of the countless number of, of doctors and nurses and uh, first responders that are doing that, especially with this uh, coronavirus. Uh, one of our, our brothers is a chaplain at Bellevue Hospital and he's telling me that you know he just walks the halls and, and prays with the nurses and he goes to the bedside of those uh, who are suffering from this virus and just uh, praying with them and reminding them that other people are praying for them as well, our, our communities. So I just want to uh, encourage all of us uh, in this uh, commandment that God, that Jesus gives us himself uh, to love, the example that he gave of uh, laying down his life in love for us. In a very special way, uh, he does this in the Eucharist. Every time we come to Mass, His body is broken for us and His blood is poured out for us so that we could uh, pour out our lives in love for others. So I hope uh, that uh, we learn, we yearn for Jesus in the Eucharist and again, many of us cannot receive Him except uh, spiritually we'll make a, an active um, communion with the Lord. Uh, but hopefully after this virus is over, we realize how much uh, we, we missed the Lord sacramentally in the Eucharist. And it's tonight uh, that we celebrate that great gift. You know, uh, when I grew up in, the, in kind of the, the 2000s, the 90s and the 2000s, and the people thought it was gonna be the end of the world around the Jubilee year. And I remember reading articles, you know, in, in Time Magazine, you know, uh, if, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? And people wrote all sorts of things. You know, I would jump out of a, a plane, I would go bungee jumping, I would do all these things. And then I remember uh, hearing a meditation one time. When Jesus had 24 hours to live, what did he do? Well, there was still uh, more sick he could have cured. There were still more lepers that he could have cleansed. There were still more blind people that he could have given sight to. But that's not what he did. When he had 24 hours to live, what did he do? He called his apostles together. He ordained them priests. He took bread and wine and said, this is my body, this is my blood. And whatever you do, this, do this in memory of me. He found a way to still be in the world until he comes again on the last day. He found a way so that the blind and the sick and the lame could still come to him and experience his healing power, his healing presence in the Eucharist. Again, unfortunately, many of us aren't able to receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. But just by participating in this Mass, knowing that this Mass is being offered for all of you, in a very real way, Jesus' presence uh, can go out from this chapel into your hearts, into your homes, so that you could experience his healing power and his healing presence. And it's with that uh, devotion that we come to him this day, uh, thanking him for the gift of the priesthood, thanking him for the gift of the Eucharist, and that we do this in memory of him. May Jesus Christ be praised, now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the whole world, for the salvation of all souls. And for the triumph of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the end to this virus. We pray for all those who are affected by it. We pray for God's blessings and healings for, for the sick and the suffering. We pray for God's mercy for those who have died. We pray for God's strength for those who take care of the sick and the suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our school community that we will be united in the love of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, that through this Holy Mass, all of our school families will experience the love that comes from the heart of Jesus present in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all priests this night for the gift of the priesthood, and we pray uh, for an increase in vocations uh, to the priests of the religious life, even from our school community here, that the Lord will raise up many shepherds uh, to lay down their lives in love and in service to Jesus and his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who requested our prayers and those we promised to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in thanksgiving for the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist, that our hearts may yearn for him, 
so that when we can receive them sacramentally, we will never take this gift for, for granted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary that she will intercede for us as she uh, intercedes for all of us now as we pray, Hail Mary, full Lord of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and have become for us the bread of life. Blessed Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that we offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious and the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. 
Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, O Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. We pray for all the victims of the coronavirus. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Because also your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some shared fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Capetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Our ministry beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. invite you all to make an act of spiritual communion. So just in your own heart now invite Jesus to come into your heart sacramentally, spiritually. And you cannot receive him sacramentally, but come nevertheless, Lord, spiritually into our hearts. Purify them, sanctify them, render them like to thy own. It was a deeper longing and yearning to receive you in the Eucharist. So that when this epidemic is over, we'll be able to come to your church, come to the receive you in the sacraments. We thank you for the gift of, of your Eucharistic presence. We thank you for your healing power and your healing presence. And we pray that your real presence now will, will just flood from all the tabernacles of the world uh, into our hearts, into our homes, so that we may experience your power. Help us never to be separated from you. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant, my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Just want to remind everyone tomorrow, uh, Archbishop Gomez, who is the head of the USCCB, uh, the Bishops' Conference of the United States, has asked that everyone unite themselves in prayer at noon. We know traditionally noon is when Christ uh, was crucified to the cross and he died at three. So he asked that everyone at noon uh, would pray the litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, so to pray for the end of this uh, pandemic uh, and for our, God's blessing and protection upon our nation and upon our people. So I want to encourage you, it only takes a few moments to pray, but tomorrow at noon, if you could remember to pray the litany of the most sacred heart of Jesus uh, for those affected by this virus and for an end to, to this virus, asking the sacred heart uh, that was pierced for us on the cross uh, tomorrow, uh, Good Friday, uh, that for his mercy and his healing for all of us. And God bless you all, and thank you for joining us uh, during these holy days of, of prayer as we celebrate uh, the Paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus.